We look good. I do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Cheers. So how you feeling today? Stronger. <laughs> Great Chicago song. Stronger. I love this song. Feeling stronger every day. The chorus is uh, our the reason we picked a song for this episode. Uh, this is early, early Chicago. Yeah. Um, by the way, I watched a documentary on, uh, uh, what's his name? Kath, Brian Kath, I think, K-A-T-H, I think it's Brian. Yeah. Keith. He's Kath, one of the writers, right? Something Kath. From the early he's days. He's the original. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, the singer, guitar player. Like 25 kind of, to 64. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. He was kind of the, uh, key guy in the middle. And Peter Cetera played bass and kind of sang once in a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then when he died, the, the, well, the the documentary is pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Brian Kath. I don't remember. I'll, and anyway, I'll, I'll double check you on that. His daughter uh, did the uh, did the uh, documentary. Mm-hmm. That's so, cool. Pretty yeah. neat stuff. Awesome. So feeling stronger every day. We're using that as a little uh, thematic intro to our, our tool that we're going to talk about today, which we call the strong hand. There you go. Yeah. I thought I'd let it play a little bit. What a fun little groove right there. Yeah. I love that chord progression. Yeah. So um, we've got this tool called the strong hand tool, and it is a very simple way to kind of just think through where we get stuck mm-hmm. uh, as we're trying to get something done or as there, there are these hurdles uh, that we've got to jump over on the pathway of execution. Yeah. And... Uh, I made this tool to help really to just explain to a client, uh, hey, listen, uh, it, it's not it's not enough to just have a good idea. A good idea is a thing. It's a big deal. Um, but there are these dif- different hurdles that we've got to jump over uh, to end up doing good things really well for a long time, the right direction, all that sort of thing. And I've found that there are all these ways that people get stuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, along that pathway of execution. And so I came up with this tool to just help explain it, to help kind of show the different phases, uh, the different hurdles, different uh, uh, problems you might run into. Um, and I call the tool the strong hand tool. Now, by the way, a uh, little pitch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so if, uh, you know, Shane, we're We've been doing this a little while. We're going to do it for a lot longer. Love doing it. Um, but we're doing this because our clients need Lodestone mm-hmm. to help. So uh, if you're out there and you're a business owner or a leadership team member and you're, you get your hands on the steering wheel of a business and you need some help figuring out, give us a ring. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that simple. LodestoneTrueNorth.com. We, we like or, to talk uh, on the phone. That sort of thing. We love talking on yeah. the phone. Um, at least I do. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I don't love it. I love what it does. You, you love Zooms. Yeah. I'm not a... No, dude. No, I don't. <laughs> Shoot me now. So, I mean, I do them. You do them. You do them. You do a good uh, job at it. necessary, but... necessary evil. Yeah. Um, all right. So, strong hand tool. So, first of all, um, what I've noticed uh, is uh, that there's this... There are these different kind of walls we run into. Uh, And if you're saying, I want to, um, you know, maybe you see somebody that's doing something really meaningful that you want to do. Um, In a a business context, it might be you go off to a conference and you're at this conference and this person is speaking and they're speaking about, I don't know, let's say uh, some operating system or they're speaking about uh, some way to cast vision in your company, or maybe they're mm-hmm. speaking about some way to hire or fire or review or whatever. And you go, oh, that's what I should be doing. You know, and that's so that's the first hurdle is you got to jump over this uh, hurdle called epiphany, 
where you go, huh, now I see, now I understand, you know, and, 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 and um, on the pathway to exec- uh, execution, the first problem is folks just don't see things. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't see what they should be executing on. Uh, so we jump over that hurdle. Once you manage to jump over that hurdle, and there's a lot of pain and expense cost, maybe is a better way to put it, in having an epiphany. You know, epiphanies are costly, uh, but the wise find them for half price. Or three quarters. Or three quarters, depending on how wise you are. 90% off. (laughs) Wait, that's not all. Today only. Yes. So um, that's the first hurdle is have the darn epiphany where you go, oh my gosh, I should be doing that. Right. I love... Uh, and we've right. all been there. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's been there. Absolutely. You do it with Everybody. your family, your health, mm-hmm. your finances, all sorts of stuff. Um, I love the uh, Brian Regan skit where he's talking about going to the get his glasses, get, get you know... <laughs> we've mentioned this before. You know, set up for glasses. What do you call that guy? Optometrist? Sure. Is that the eye glasses guy? Yeah. Okay. I can I get him confused with ophthalmologist. So, yeah, he you know, and he's like, man... I could have been seeing things, you know what I'm saying? Like, who puts off getting glasses? Well, I do. You do, <laughs> yeah, actually. Do. So well, there first, you go. I've tried it three times, and I'm like, okay, I just you need I'll to just, go to my guy. Just, I got a guy. I got a guy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, but shout the, out to George Haryung. There you go. There you so go. The, the point is, is that we put off these things or don't see these things, and and then when it happens, you're like, what the heck? I could have been seeing things. Like, I could have. I, it took me this long or this much effort to f- see this simple thing. Yeah. And that's a big breakthrough. I see it all the time with folks. Uh, so the first big hurdle. Um, it is, uh, you know, seeing solutions. It's having ideas. Um, it's, it's, it's clarity. Uh, yeah. It's understanding how things work. Um, it may be uh, get an introduction to somebody. You know, uh, a lot of times with a... Uh, leadership team one of the i don't know four or five massive issues that all struggle with and the ones that solve it excel um is having the right people on their staff on their on their leadership team Mm. right there Mm -hmm. and a lot of times the owner is on the leadership team and the owner doesn't belong there because they're not the business sophistication or talent needed to run it has outgrown the owner. The owner hasn't kept up right. somehow or another. Uh, and they just don't belong in the driver's seat. Now, that doesn't mean they don't own it, but those are two different things. And so that epiphany, uh, the epiphany of going, oh, man, my ops guy is the wrong guy. My HR uh, VP or my senior with this or that or my, you know, my partner – Whatever you want to call that, uh, that kind of high-level connection and that space and that tier, maybe, uh, that's an expensive epiphany where you say, huh, I don't have the right people sitting here. Um, so sometimes that epiphany comes when a principal sees another leadership team and they go, and they go oh, yeah, look, uh, you guys are doing it great, huh? And, and, and they realize... I don't have those kind of people on my team. Uh, okay, so mm-hmm. first hurdle, jumping the uh, the wall and, and of epiphany and getting over it and going, got it. All right, next wall or next, uh, uh, yeah, wall on the on the path of execution is context. Uh, this is um, taking the epiphany that you've had. And kind of being able to put it into, well, context with, well, where are we going? Um, why does this matter? How does this fit our strategy? How does this fit this season we're in? How does this fit our budget? How does this fit, you know, um, that y- the, the two or three or four uniques that we bring to the marketplace? You know, I call those strategic fingerprints. Um, does this fit all that and um a lot of times people just don't they kind of take the epiphany and start running you know Mm -hmm. just go Mm -hmm. and that's why i call these uh walls on the path of execution because you're running along with this epiphany and like bam right you hit some wall and you look up like oh i don't 
have this in context. That's going to leave a mark. Yeah, right. That's, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, context around um, vision, et cetera. Now, one of the well, great example of this, I've uh, read a little bit of Ray Dalio. I have kind of stopped because I've got, I, I wasn't able to push through all of the. Ray uh, Dalio'd out. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I strained something. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, he. I mean, I I met my match. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, well, you can always go back. And the book was yeah, freaking. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like it's like the literally the size of a brick. Was it bigger uh, than the book we read last year? It's that size, yeah. but it's all this financial stuff, and I'm like, I can't do it. Yeah. I got yeah. through a bit of it. It was uh, what was it called? Um, Debt crisis, uh, yeah. an- analyzing global mm-hmm. debt crises or yeah. something like that. And yeah. I'm like, geez, dude, you couldn't even, didn't the title give it away? I'm like, I, yeah, no. Can we so, break this down into bite-sized chunks? Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, one of the things he talks about that I, that was a big takeaway, even though I couldn't fight my way through the book, I still got this big takeaway, which is he asks you, he said, you need to understand, you need to ask yourself what principle am I operating under? What is the principle that's really good? That, uh, so, so when you say context, this falls into context where you say, All right, I got this epiphany, boom, we should do this and do this and do that. Great. Well, all right, let's put this into context there, boss. Like, what is your operating principle? You know, uh, and it could be, Well, you know, all sales are good sales, or you're, oper- you know, but you may not have, you probably don't have operating principles uh, <laughs> that are f- on the surface they're mm-hmm. they're buried somewhere they're vague they're sensory they're assumed you know mm-hmm. they're but they're often not very specific and um, and often you can't point to them uh, so these are you know this can be tied to your strategy etc but you got to ask yourself okay this epiphany how is it in context it solves what why should we do it? How does this fit? Is this part of the big plan? Is this part of our vision? All right. Mm-hmm. So that's the second hurdle. So you get it into context and you start running down the path again. And then, bam, you hit the next wall. And this wall I call framework uh, the fr- and the, or format. And this is, all right, what's our operating system? You know, how do we drop things that we're doing into a system in which we get them done. Mm -hmm. Um, There are lots of ways to talk about format. For instance, I think we've talked about this before in writing. I struggled when I was writing my first book uh, because I had the wrong format, not the wrong format of the book, Mm -hmm. but the wrong format of the writing system. Mm, And I... Muddy, muddle, muddled along with, with pages, and I muddled along, well, first with Word, and this was like, what, 15, 2015 or yeah. 16, yeah. Um, and I didn't, you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not great with software, it's got to be kind of like pictures and colors and stuff for me, and shapes and drag and You're drop. just opening yourself up to a lot of jokes, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> don't make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you know, but I saw this muddling around through Word, and Word was just way too powerful and had way too many features. And it, it has like five toolbars at the top. Messed me up. Yeah. I couldn't do it. And then I started doing pages, and that was a little better mm-hmm. with, with Apple, but it still was too much power and too, I, I don't know, it just, the way that the interface and the, and the it just didn't fit my creative process mm-hmm. at all. And then I got into Scrivener. Uh, I don't know how I found it. It was 50 bucks. Game changer. Mm-hmm. Totally changed how I wrote. Fit my format. Uh, well, it was a good format that fit my writing style. Yeah. And then I was able to crank away uh, and just put in the miles. You know, So format. All right? So that's yep. an example. Yep. Um, how do you schedule things and keep track of things and see if you got things done? That's, that's an answer. That you know, whatever you answer there is is your format. Mm-hmm. Um, softwares are often formats. Um, business operating systems like Pinnacle uh, is a operating uh, a format mm-hmm. where it's like drop in some stuff 
and use the format to say where we're we going, how we're going to get there, did mm-hmm. we get it done, how do we solve problems, right. all that stuff, measure progress. Um, management tools, project management is an example of format. And that's this whole next hurdle is folks, like, for instance, you're saying, uh, you know, I want to, uh, we're going back to our original example this guy mm-hmm. at a guy goes to a seminar or conference sees this thing i should i should have better people on my leadership team okay why well if it's this here's why okay got it that's context and then third all right framework all right how are you going to go about finding better people well i'm going to put an ad on indeed you know what well, you know there's value there but you've got to develop a a format where you're saying, all right, I'm going to make these calls. I'm going to talk to these people. I'm going to interview this way. I'm going to have this schedule. I'm going to have these results. Here's how I'm going to measure results. Mm-hmm. You know, you just got to have some sort of plug and play. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, maybe plug and play is the wrong way. You might have to make it up. You might have to create this format, mm-hmm. but um, a way that it's, it's sterile. All right. Format or operating system or framework uh, is, it's just a place where you drop things and then make sure it happens. Mm-hmm. Example of a framework might be a kitchen, a workshop, you know? So a kitchen, like, all right, we've got these drawers and these stoves and refrigerators and all those utensils and a sink. For, uh, uh, knock yourself out, you know? And you're like, <laughs> well, I can't cook. Okay, well, there's, you know, there's our problem. No there's talent. A, yeah, so there's no talent. <laughs> So that's an example of a framework. And you might say, well, I'm great at cooking and so forth, so on, but this kitchen is set up wrong. Mm-hmm. Well, it's got, a kit, it's got a stove and a fridge and a countertop. Yeah, but it's set up in such a weird way I can't do it. Uh, I'm tripping over myself and dropping stuff and everything's stacking up here and there, and there's no flow. you know. And that's really probably the key, the key result from a framework is a framework disappears in the hands of the craftsman, which uh, whatever craft you're producing, it's a tool, really. Framework is where the tools are. And if the framework disappears, you've got the right one, mm-hmm. where you don't even pay attention to the kitchen. You just make stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, Email, for example, is uh, there, there's a way, there's ways that people organize their email and whether it's Outlook or this or that or the other. And that's an example of framework. Mm-hmm. You know? So we've got to have a great fr- framework. So now once you get this framework of some sort in this pathway to execution, um, you're running along and you hit the next wall. And the next wall is uh, you look up and you're, you know, stars in your eyes. Uh, and it says execute, right? So this is where a lot of people fall short. I fall short here mostly um, around just really putting in the reps. Um, work ethic could be mm-hmm. inserted here. Just it's just it's just getting up and doing it again and doing it again and doing it again. Putting in the forty-seven laps. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, yeah, you've got a framework now, but the framework is showing you here's what you need to do next and use this thing to get it done. And then you just need to go do it. Um, that often is, can be tied to character. It could be tied to how you're made. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is why I, I struggle with it, but it's that day after day, day in, day out. Uh, Jim Collins talks about this. Yeah. What was that? Uh, was it built to last or I can't remember which book it was of his. Um, I, then good to great. Those two books keep, yeah, they mesh together. Yeah, it, yeah, this is the one like where he book. talks about the twenty-mile march, mm-hmm. uh, and that's and I, I don't we know talked about that uh, in a previous yeah. podcast. I'll look it up. Twenty-mile march. So this is just getting up the next day and not doing too much, and not doing too little. You know, mm-hmm. when it's an easy day, in this hiking metaphor, uh, you don't do thirty miles. You just do twenty, mm-hmm. and if it's a hard day and it's really hard to get in 10, you do 20. You know, you just always do 20. You do 20 on the hard days and 20 on the easy days, and it helps your, you know, pace. And he had a lot of data from his, in his research around companies uh, that stayed great, um, that they followed that kind of principle. Um, and it, that's an example of an operating principle. Right. 20, uh, 20 mile march. You know, okay, we're not going to overdo it or underdo it. And that's a really good guiding principle. Anyway, 
So execute. Now, work ethic can be toxic. It can be a big problem. I've seen this often with folks that are really good at just cranking out hard work for a long time in the same direction. And the reason it's toxic is they're going the wrong way. Yeah. You know what I mean, and and they and and folks that are I would I'm not I'm gonna use the word lazy, but it's not the right word. Folks that are like less good at just staying the course, stop sooner, going down the wrong path. Mm-hmm. Right, they're they're going down the wrong path and they stop. Uh, folks with hard, uh, good, strong, solid work ethic go down the wrong path, and when it gets tough, they just keep going. Mm-hmm. You know, and it puts more miles behind them in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, even going back to context, it's a big deal to make sure you go in the right direction. Make mm-hmm. sure this thing you're about to unleash your work ethic on is the right thing, right direction. Um, so the last part is, so we got so far four. Epiphany, context, framework, execute. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last one is one that I very rarely see anybody do Um, and that is review that is to kind of stop at key points Um, the closing of a season the closing of a project uh, whatever that may be some ending point key ending point and then look back and go all right how'd that go we do this all the time yeah yeah and that's our aar tool yep it's gold. It is. Pure gold. I have unloaded that late, lately on a handful of clients, and everyone I was like, why have you been holding out on this tool? <laughs> like, oh. I mean, this is a work in progress, guys. <laughs> I mean, you know. So, uh, and in all of our tools, we, we are constantly upgrading them and yeah. adjusting them and making them better and mm-hmm. finding better ones. We are not... We are tool agnostic in the sense that, hey, if this tool doesn't work, we're tossing it and getting Get rid a better of it. one. Yep, getting yep. a better one, making it better. Constantly fiddling mm-hmm. with them. Yeah. Um, so a- a- our tool, so review and look back, say, okay, we had this epiphany. We put it in context. We cr- you know, dropped it in our framework. We executed a bunch. We feel like we got to this stopping point. How'd that go? You know, uh, And then that creates, it takes you right back around to the front or to the top of the list where Mm -hmm. it creates some new epiphanies, this review process, you know, Mm -hmm. where you say, huh, we had the right idea, but we did it wrong. Or we had the wrong idea that we did really well, (laughs) you know, Uh, uh, you know, and whatever, you just got to pull the thing apart and figure out here's what we're going to do more of and less of, here's what we're trying to do. And here's what we actually did. Mm -hmm. And all right, what are we going to change? Um, so that's the review uh, portion. Mm-hmm. So uh, on our website, we have a, uh, this template. This is just a worksheet um, that you can download. Go to loadstonetruenorth.com. Mm-hmm. What's the name of the page? It's a... Um, I can't remember the name of the page. Uh, tr- next steps or try this out. Are you ready to take the next? I can't remember the name. Oh, no. <laughs> But it's a, it's a, if you're on the uh, video, uh, you'll see a link there. And if you're on the audio, shoot, you can go to show notes and uh, you'll it's see. It's like something like, are you ready for help or something, something like, like that. Something like that. Yeah. It's really well named. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Who named that? Very memorable. <laughs> so You want me to change uh, that? Uh, no. I, I, got something I, should, a little more I should probably flashy, just right? write it down and remember it, I think. Is what <laughs> needs to happen there. I'm sure it's named fine. I was going to go to our website, yeah. lodestonetruenorth.com. Mm-hmm. That's a really good beer, by the way. Elliot Ness Amber Lager. Love it. Elliot Ness, local, local brew here. I'm Army drinking uh, Great uh, Lakes. gluten-free, which is kind of sad, but it's what I got to do. Yeah, that's good. You Red Bridge. Good. Yeah, it's you like okay. that. It's okay. It's not my favorite. But What is your favorite as far as Glutenberg? Glutenberg, uh, Glutenberg uh, IPA. IPA one? Mm. It's very hard to get. Mm. So you ready? Uh, are you ready for this? Are you ready for help? Is the name. Are you ready for help? Yes. So go to lowstonetruenorth.com. Are you ready for help page? Yeah. All right. There you go. And you can Or if you're watching us, there'll be a link below. So yeah, you can download this tool. It's yeah. a simple little worksheet. Yeah. Uh, now, this as a housekeeping uh, or practical, if you're using this tool, um, and we used it this morning, 
actually. We did. A little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. we actually did. And we kind of were like, all right. Well, because we thought up something new, different, whatever. Well, we. <laughs> this is this is one of my problems, as I think up stuff all the time. <laughs> well, this is the problem of all visionaries. Is, uh, and that's not a problem. It's actually uh, songwriting. Uh, like a great example is uh, Springsteen, right? Springsteen, when he does an album, he literally has like 60 songs that he wrote. And he just picks the top handful. Which is a good way to do it. Yeah. It's and better than think, having nine songs and hoping they all work. Yeah, and that's how Sting does it. Yeah, but... <laughs> but he, oh, wait a second. Okay, he's actually good at that. Well, but. and those are two really different ways of doing it. But does um, Sting have something that he didn't like share with everybody else? Maybe. Probably. Maybe, I, don't know. I don't know. But he's not coming up. I think he's not he's, as prolific. I think he's, yes, the prolific piece. Like he squeezes it all out and then he's done, you know. And, and Springsteen seems to just kind of have a bottomless hmm. flow of, you know, ideas. Yeah. But the point is, is that visionaries do that. You know, yeah. they have a flow of ideas. That's what makes a visionary um, that's one of the signs of a visionary mm-hmm. is that you have a lot of ideas. Mm-hmm. Now, not all of them are good ideas, uh, clearly. Uh, and probably twenty percent, maybe. Maybe the eighty twenty. No, it's maybe yeah, maybe it's a it's a vital few. Mm-hmm. It's a there's a trivial many and a right. vital few for sure. Right. So it's definitely an imbalance between the good ones and the bad ones. Mm-hmm. The bad the bad ones being more uh, more voluminous. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say that. Uh, there's a plethora of bad ones. A cornucopia. Yes. So uh, you way you use this, print this thing off, and just kind of just use it as a worksheet, mm-hmm. this this thing, and write your epiphany. What was your epiphany? Oh, I think I'm going to take blah, blah, blah to the marketplace. Or I think we're going to rewrite our blah, blah, blah process. Mm-hmm. Or I think we're going to start having, uh, you know, uh, retreats, uh, annual retreats for the whole team. Okay, great. That's your epiphany. All right, you write it in there. Try to like vet it a little bit. Try to put some, put some legs under it a little mm-hmm. bit, and say, "All right, here's what it is. Mm-hmm. Here's what I mean." And then you say, "All right, next context. How does this fit? Explain it. Write it down. What principle are we operating under? Uh, does it fit our strategy, et cetera, et cetera?" Then you say, "All right, now we're going to do some stuff about this. Mm-hmm. What? And where are we going to park that? And how are we going to make sure it's getting done?" Uh, and so you got to have some sort of framework. A lot of times right here, folks go, I don't have a framework. If you don't have a framework, give us a call. I got a guy. Got a guy. <laughs> we got a company. That too. Um, okay. Uh, and we're the, we're the folks to call, by the way. Yeah. So um, there you go. That is uh, very simply the strong hand tool. Uh, if you are, again, our leadership team uh, member, uh, business owner, principle of some sort and you need help uh what we do here at lodestone is uh we help the client identify their ultimate destination Mm -hmm. and then we chart a course with the client to hit that destination by getting them to focus on the few vital tasks the 80 20 again right the few vital tasks that are going to move the needle month in and month out uh on hitting that ultimate destination and then hold them accountable mm-hmm. to those few vital tasks. Mm-hmm. That's as simple as we can make it here as far as coaching. That's what a coach does. That's what we do here. So mm-hmm. um, love to help folks do that. Um, that is a wrap. Is that a wrap? Feeling stronger every day. Strong hand tool. Did great. Just wanted to do a down and dirty uh, little podcast, episode 38. We're going to hit 40 soon. 40, yeah. Then we'll hit 50. Roger Half that. a century. Yeah. Keep doing this. All right. Chicago, taking us out. Here you go, bud. I love how he 
doubled the vocals right there from mm-hmm. the Yeah. The Rhodes piano too is. You hear that? Yeah. I think it's a Rhodes. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. Didn't they double vocals though for guys that had a thinner voice? I don't know. I mean, it just sounds great. It does, because you get a little bit of a coursey kind of effect to it. Yeah. Love the horn section. There's a groove like this in that Black Crow song, Remedy. Oh, yeah? The same chord progression and a little kind of that, the way that the that shuffling groove. Just that one part. Okay, podcast is over. I'm going to look up the other song. Okay. Remedy? Yeah. Remedy. Black Rose. All right, I'm going to switch. Oh, this is pretty cool. It just switched to a different song. Almost. Same, same. It is. Pace. Same uh, tempo. Got that same groove. That's weird. The piano's doing the same thing. No. That's yeah. Yeah. This guy good. It, yeah, it does have the same kind of That's a good title for a song to use for the podcast. Yeah. Remedy? Yeah. That'd be... We got a remedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put that on our list. I love the chorus. So in our I have some what? Remedy. Oh. There's the two background vocal singers. Yeah. Uh, one hard right and right. one hard left. Yeah, I hear it. Sounds great. And then the lead vocals right in the center. That's pretty cool. We should use this song. Oh, we're getting plenty of songs here. Where's the Trello? There you go. Remedy. You sound like me typing. The Black Murder. The Crows. A group of crows is a murder, right? That's right. Yeah. What's one crow? Uh, misdemeanor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, assault with deadly attempt. I don't know. <laughs> deadly intent. We'll have to ask Mike Steele. <laughs> That's a good idea. All right. So uh, I think we leave all this on here. I love this. All right. I love this little banter. Okay. What a great song. He does this crazy shriek here. Yeah. Man. Somewhere in here, he just kind of like unloads. There's 
Roger Rose piano again. I'm you. Now you sound like Lawyer's Guns and Money. Yeah. That's what. Is that in a uh, classical music? Sprechstimme. Remember that? What? What is that? Yeah, I don't remember. The German. The German. The uh, the, there it is. Wow. That was that was kind of rough. Yeah, Sprechstimme. It's uh. It's like this. It's almost like. It's this guttural verbal but it's not it's like not a word it's kind of like chanting that's where it's but it's german it's from huh. the expressionism oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i know you're talking about now i remember studying that in school i'm like why am i listening to this crap I, there you go he can really well well that's good mm-hmm. that's good 038 in the can. I think there's one more. There it is. Yeah, there it goes. All right. 